and I'm excited about uh, talking with the one and only Jody Lee from Texas Homegrown Radio in Stephenville, Texas. Jody, how you doing, buddy? Uh, I'm still alive. That's good. <laughs> I died last month. I died for a little bit, but other than that, <laughs> I was in a I was in a coma for two weeks. Now that is the craziest thing in the world because I whenever yeah. we went. Whenever the coronavirus first started, whenever all the, the, the mayhem started, I remember somebody posting up, wouldn't it be crazy if you woke up from a coma after this? And I posted, I actually know a guy. Because <laughs> you posted, like, I came back to a very different world. It was, dude, I woke up at a full beard, which I didn't know if you grow a beard. And, oh, yeah. And then, okay. They had the TV on, and everybody's quarantined. And then I see Tom Brady doesn't play for the Patriots anymore. And I'm like, how long was I out on <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Dude, it, 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 four more months and then you really, would have really freaked you out with murder hornets and all the other shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> keeps coming at us. <laughs> oh, man. Well, at least, I mean, honestly, buddy, I'm so glad that you're with me to do this today, um, that we can talk a little bit about your life and your contribution to the Texas music scene. Well, first off, where did you start? doing uh, I, texas homegrown was it in stephenville yeah yeah uh, and i've done radio in stephenville pretty much my whole life since high school uh, is that where you're from i started yeah from stephenville okay. and I, I went in right after i gra graduated high school i walked into the we had two stations at that and i walked in one of them and said i wanted to work there and um the manager she goes well what position do you want and i said yours <laughs> and she goes no one's ever said that she goes you realize like i'm gonna have to start you on weekends and you're gonna run the ranger games i'm like that's cool yeah. but one day i'm gonna have your job and i'm gonna buy this station which that's i ended up doing it took that's me a long time what station was that uh it's when we had kwby it was originally the it was k-cub back in the day hmm. and uh it changed call letters over the years but, so yeah. whenever, whenever you were doing that did you because I remember when I first started to get to know you, because we met, we met at Larry Joe, and then I would watch you online. And I remember thinking, man, that's so good that he does bits. Because I didn't know that many <laughs> DJs that did bits. I love doing bits, but I didn't yeah. know that many other DJs that did them, uh, especially not around here. But you, like, I, I can't remember the first one you did. But not only did you do bits on the radio, but you would put them up on video. Like, I think you did a soap opera one. Yeah. Uh, what was it called? <laughs> we, we did uh uh what we i forget what we named it but it was uh yeah, like that it was stomach like a, churns or something yeah yeah that's it uh and what we did was have like dramatic actors but they only read like lyrics from like a josh abbott song or you know like had to be Texas, and it was so funny and awkward yeah and, was, uh, uh, garrett thompson was the one that did that with me oh cool that's yeah. awesome so yeah they were I, I just remember thinking that was so funny that you were able to, to work the scene in with your mad, twisted mind. And I love that. So um, you started doing radio, uh, what, what, like what, right after high school? Yeah, 1993. Uh, what, so did you immediately get into the Texas scene? How did that work that, that you started there, getting into them? I'm so old. There, there really wasn't a Texas scene. I mean, back then, we had Jerry Jeff and Gary P. And we just called it bar music. I mean, it wasn't even a thing called Texas music. Hmm. You know, and it's, I think whenever Pat Green and Corey Morrow and Robert O'Keefe all like really started going big, that's when the whole Texas thing started. But, and I love those guys, but what hooked me was the Oklahoma boys, the boys from Oklahoma, you know, Great Divide and Cross Canadian and Bowen and Stoney and all those guys were coming down here. And I was like, wow, this is, this is it right here. Yeah, so I've always loved the Oklahoma scene. I'm from Wichita Falls, so yeah. I get the scene. It's a hot no way. <laughs> the best, best of both worlds. Worlds. Yeah. <laughs> so I, and I love that scene. I love that history. So you were a part of that. Do you remember a young Cody Canada? You oh, yeah. A young Bolin. We used to take them to parties after their show. Like they, And that's how they built their fan base. They're like, take me where the people are. Like We want to get to know these people, so we'll come to our show next time. And, and uh, I even went and stayed up there with them. And uh, with Bolin in Oklahoma, because I wanted to go to the Wormy Dog. After I heard live at the Wormy Dog, I was like, I have to go to this place. Oh, cool. Yeah. Fan of the so, venue, just like me. I like that. <laughs> so, what yeah, is Go ahead. And Bolin, he told everybody I was a bull rider from Australia. He made me go <laughs> and get toast. 
I had to get toast in between his sets as an Australian bull rider, which I am like three times bigger than any bull rider I know. That is crazy. But, yeah, I, and my accent got worse throughout the night. Oh man! So um, that brings up another question because I love to ask this. I I see you. I saw you at different places. It mainly be around Stephenville whenever I would see you. But did you did you get a chance to kind of go see all these venues that you always hear about? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I've still got a bucket list of ones. I I've, I've still never been to Green Hall. I don't know how I have it, but it's going to happen. I see. Yeah, when it opens back up, that's one of my first places to go. Right? Have you ever been to Lukenbach before? Yeah, love Lukenbach. I actually lived in Kerrville for a while, so we went to Lukenbach a lot. Cool. You did the hill yeah. country thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I end up coming back to Stephenville. You have to move away just long enough that you appreciate it. That's what I tell everybody. Oh, that's good, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you can't wait to get out of your hometown until you leave, and then you're like, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let me let me ask you uh, some of the bands you were talking about earlier. They were from the Oklahoma scene, and they really yeah. turned you on. Now we also talked about the Larry Joe Taylor competition. That's my favorite thing, and we, you know, I, I've broadcasted that ever since they started. The very first year, um, I've got to broadcast the the thing, and, but I like that even more than the festival because you get new talent, and there's so many now that come from out of state. Even, I mean, it's a big thing. Yeah, and you get to hear people that you've never heard before and i i've always been i want to help the new guy you know and right, i've done it long enough that the, the big guys were new guys when i started you know and but i, I always want to find that new talent and help them because you have to i mean someone's got to do it right so so let's talk a little bit about texas homegrown whenever i first noticed i remember one time you showed me a like your set list for the next hour because i was about to be interviewed and it was some of the most obscure Texas New Towns Van Zandt. It was stuff that I was like, how did you even get yeah. a hold of that song? And uh, so when did you start Texas Homegrown and what were your ideas for it from the get-go? Well, I'd, I'd already, you know, with the FM, I was doing the Texas music stuff too, but um, whenever I started Texas Homegrown, it was really because of the musicians. Like, I was going to quit doing radio. I was going to get a real job, you know, that paid money. <laughs> and it's because of Mike Stanley, actually that I started Texas Homegrown Radio. Next day. He, uh, yeah, he calls me and he says, he goes, what are you doing? And I was working for a station doing a morning show, but it was, they played classic rock. And I was just going to do that just to keep it kind of, he goes, why are you not doing Texas music? Like you're the guy that helps new people and then you're not doing it. And so for an hour, he dropped at me. And this is <laughs> weird too. And so I met this station and, and this kid walks in, young kid, and he had a CD in his hand. And he said, hey, I got this new you know, EP that I'm putting out. And they told me you were the, the guy to talk to to play it. I said, well, I don't do Texas music anymore. And this tear just comes out of his eye. And he goes, well, who's going to play it then? They said you were the guy. And I said, I used to be the guy, but now I'm not the guy. Because they said you were the guy. And he just leaves. And I'm like, oh, listen to it, though. And he's like, whatever. Walked out, never seen this kid again. Don't know who he was. And that was the same day that Mike yelled at me, and I'm like, screw it. I'm going to start Texas Homegrown Radio. But it was it was kind of like, you know, I thought, yeah, he's right. Like, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. So, yeah. Well, that's yeah. good that it brought you that path, man, because I think uh, when it comes to the scene, there are certain people that are anxious to learn about the new music, that are anxious right. to find out what's next. Not all, not all people are like that. They're kind of like, all right, what's happening here? But you set out for it. You're in a great location. Now, how did oh, yeah. that, that location help with the end oh, result? That's, that's everything. I mean, Stephenville, you know how much talent comes out of Stephenville. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's just crazy with the college. And it, college is growing. They're going Division One now. So it's getting even bigger. But, I mean, there's kids that go to school here just so they can play music in Stephenville. <laughs> but I think... When, you know, I used to do, uh, back when I was doing the FM stuff, I had a picking party that we did. And we, what it was, we would bring in, like, you know, Corey Morrow or somebody like that, acoustic. But we'd always, <clears throat> I always made them have a, a new guy open, like a local guy or something. But people in my crowd were Six Market Boulevard, Cali Ray Harris, Mike Stanley, uh, Mike Ryan was there all the time. But there was so much talent as a, just in the crowd 
that a lot of times they would end up on stage playing with the bigger artists and it was just like an intimate setting deal and it was just that time was perfect you know and six market dolly shine all those guys just kind of took off and it's that way again you know you got geo and shay abshire and co wetzel and it's just the, always a new group coming up from the know? area that's a weird it's a, yeah. it's a cool concentrated area of music <clears throat> and i i always whenever we're, i'm talking about it to anyone i always say it's this culmination of the fact that larry joe taylor festival is held there uh and right. they have two of those yeah that too but plus that the too is homegrown place. and the college town because when you what's the how many people live in that town it's not that big of a town is it i mean no it's it's like two different towns when school's in and in the summer you're like where'd all the traffic go yeah <laughs> it's like everybody moved yeah that's crazy let me, let me ask you uh some of the bands you were talking about earlier they were from the oklahoma scene and they really yeah. turned you on now we also talked about the larry joe taylor competition so you're you go to larry joe taylor i've seen you out there a few times i saw you out there last time uh, yeah i believe, uh, I, I, believe I, I, I told martha i appreciated her putting the festival off till i got healthy again so i didn't miss one <laughs> <laughs> they love you man they love yeah. you they put it off until october just for me <laughs> You're man of the people. Uh, I think I think last time we were out there, you made me a, a taco burrito. Uh, it was good. And I helped with your camper set up. Remember I had tools I came over? And- yeah, that whole – I remember Bobby Texas, <laughs> Bobby Texas was, like, yelling at me because he didn't know it was me trying to park that RV. And, and at that time, I was not good. And let me tell you, I've gotten better. It's nothing like your friends – uh, you know, high side and you and making fun of you. That'll get you to learn a skill. Uh, he was making he was making fun of me like crazy. He was like, "Don't get him to park!" And then I finally park, and then I get out of the car, and Michael Mode like walks up and just starts dying laughing. Turns out, looks, turns out looks at Bobby Texas and goes, "Bobby, check out who you're making fun of." <laughs> He's dying. But uh, so Larry Joe Taylor, was there anybody at those competitions that uh, really you know just wowed you from the get go? That James Cook guy was really good. I was really impressed. Uh, <laughs> but Co- and Copper Chief. Oh, my gosh, those guys. I mean. I think you told me that. You were like, dude, you got to yeah. check this show out. Yeah, they're amazing. Those guys are amazing. Great stuff. Uh, and you're the uh, you second know, person I, to say that, too. So, You know who the first winner was, right, of the songwriter? Uh, I shouldn't say competition. Larry gets mad when I say that. Showcase. Showcase. Songwriter showcase. So yeah. sorry. To understand but Luke, Luke Wade was the first winner. Luke! And, yeah, and that's before he went on, uh, was it The Voice, I guess he was on? Yeah. But- Luke Wade, amazing talent. If For all of you yeah. out there watching and don't know who that is, go check out Luke Wade. Um, so it, let's talk a little bit. So how are, you, how, do you, how are you doing this? How did you keep this afloat? Because you were, we'll talk a little bit about that. You, you went into the hospital not too long ago. How long have you been going to the hospital for, for your heart? It's been a few it's years. It's been a little over two years. Yeah, two years now. And you went in there not too long ago. Um, were you, were, did they induce you into a coma or did you fall into one? No, I fell into one. I, I was at the house and uh, I did, actually I did an interview that morning on the radio. I did the morning show that morning and I came home and I wasn't feeling good. And I called my mom to take me to the ER. I said, something ain't right. And I passed out by the time I got there. And my heart had went down to 10%. I just have a slow heart. It's hereditary. But I went to 10%, so they rushed me in the ambulance. And I don't remember anything else. I, don't, I, I remember parts of going in the ambulance, but everything else, they, I mean, they put me in a coma. They put me on a machine called the ECMO machine, which it runs a hose up both sides of your growing. And the hoses are like the size of uh, water hoses. That's how big. And it just pumps blood through your body so that your heart can rest. Yeah, and evidently not a lot of people will come out of it. And uh, when I did, I broke the restraints on my bed and pulled the throat tube out, <laughs> the breathing tube. Oh. And so I, did, I, I couldn't talk for the whole time I was in the hospital because it ripped my throat. Oh, I, was, I was really hoping that, I was hoping my voice would come back like Conway Twitty or something, but I got this. I got the same voice back. <laughs> damn, I still got this voice. Uh, yeah. Damn it. So, and how long were you were you out for? For uh, they well, they had me in that coma for two weeks, and then I came out of it, and then I was in there the rest of the month in the hospital, getting over it all. But 
Man, that's some crazy dreams. I've got some stories I can't tell you on here, but no, man. I, my, my dreams was like a Quentin Tarantino movie. Like, I thought it was so real. And when I came to, I told my dad, I made my mom leave the room. And I was telling him all the stuff that had happened. And I thought my truck had got stolen and these guys took my wallet. And there was a group trying to sell my organs. Like it was like a, a movie. Wow. And he, he just like agreed with me. And the next day he goes, you know, none of that happened, right? Like, <laughs> the doctors, they, they were calling me the miracle guy. And evidently a lot of, a lot of people come off the ECMO machine. I mean, it's, it's kind of a new thing. And only a couple of hospitals even have one. So I was like the guinea pig. So like other doctors and nurses would have to come in and look at my, my wounds and talk to me. And I was like the example. Wow. And uh, he said, I don't know how you came out of it so good. And I said, I probably heard you say I wasn't going to make it. And if you want me to do something, just say <laughs> not to do it. No. <laughs> you, you would be surprised by the power you. of spite. <laughs> That's right. Well, um, I got it. A pacemaker now too. Oh, yeah? uh, it's a pacemaker defibrillator. So if you see me shaking, I'm not dancing or anything. It's probably. Like, I asked the doctor that I really wanted it to play "Kickstart My Heart" by Motley Crue. <laughs> That's <laughs> so fun with it. Play music because I don't play music. I said, "Come on, be greatness." At least the voice like part, a, the voice box part, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just, you just hear the motorcycle cranking up. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I fall down and then there's kids vaping behind me and I pop back up with music. <laughs> be like a show. <laughs> yeah. So I had another good idea. I had a lot of ideas when I was laying in that hospital bed. But, you know, they were saying I might need to get one of those necklaces that I've fallen and I can't get down. Yeah. Necklaces. I was like, they should make those for bars. <laughs> the guys that drink too much. Like, <laughs> instead of calling the police, it just calls your Uber for you. Like, <laughs> I'm <laughs> out at the, at the door when you get me. <laughs> That's awesome. See, you're an ideas man, Jody. I see. keep coming. I I'm trying to convince my physical therapist in the hospital that we're all going to start a band called Fall Risk. <laughs> Fall <laughs> Risk? Because I had this bracelet that said Fall Risk. Oh my gosh. And awesome. it turns out one of them was a drummer. Like, there was some, I was like, spread the word. Like, let's get a bunch of physical therapy, ladies. We'll start a band. And there was a drummer. Yeah, she goes, I'm a drummer. I'm like, there you go. Fall risk. That's so awesome. <laughs> We're going to start grunge Texas music. <laughs> oh, man, that's so good. Uh, I, I, I can't believe that you still have such a freaking sense of humor after all this. As a matter of fact, I want to talk a little bit about um, Texas homegrown memes. Um, how are you able – like, it was funny because I think – you wrote something along the lines of like, hey, I a lot has changed since I've come back because we were in the corona, corona pandemic. Yeah. And you were like, man, I woke up and a lot of things have changed. And that was like, oh, man, it's crazy that he just came back from that coma. And then like the next post was something goofy. I don't even remember what it was, but it was a Texas homegrown <laughs> meme. I was like, what's well, good to see he's already back to telling jokes. Yeah. So it doesn't take long. James Cook's been in, James Cook's been in some of those memes. <laughs> I still, didn't, I still didn't make the James Cook Sirachi that you had uh, made because I was like, dude, that looks good. It looks like a really good Sirachi. Uh, you should sell it to merch. Yeah. Slap it on my face and just have it on the merch tables. Get you. As seen on, as seen on Texas homegrown memes. That's what I should do. So yeah, uh, I, when did you start the doing humor, The humor got me through it, though. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's uh, like, if it, I could think of it you. It was when I was in the hospital. You just decided I'm going to just start screwing with people? Or? Yeah, I had nothing else to do. <laughs> yeah, I was like, just going to mess with people. I'm but the doctors told me that. Yeah. They said my attitude's really what helped me get through it like I did. Well, good. You know, that's a lot of it, I think. They said you wanted to live. Like, you were so positive. That, you know, and I, so I think that did have something to do with it. Uh, tell me some of the things that you love about doing what you do. It's but we're in hiatus right now, but when you're really going at it, tell us some of the things that you love about it. You know, I, I really do love like finding new music I've never heard before. Like, I've been blown away, and and I learned a long time ago you can't judge by appearances because I've had some guys walk in that I thought, oh, this is just going to be terrible, and then they start playing. And I'm like, what? Like, where have you been hiding? So, I mean, to me, it's that excitement, you know, and I, and I like to write, I like, I like anything creative, but I respect 
the writer side of it, I think. And that's why I love Texas music so much, you know? There's so many different sounds. Yeah. And it, and everybody it, asked me, what is Texas music? And I said, it's basically the best of all genres shoved into one state. And we just take credit for all of it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there's that. There's always that too proud of Texas guy, like the uh, beer commercial. Way too proud of Texas guy that's got the tattoo and all that. I had a guy call in one day. And uh, he goes, you better not be playing all that music that ain't from Texas. You only play Texas artists. That's all you can play on there. I said, oh, yeah, yeah. That's, I said, you mean like uh, Reckless Kelly? He goes, yeah, Texas. <laughs> Texas. You know what I mean? I said, you mean like Adam Hood, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not from Texas either. He's like, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, it's a oh, me too, yeah. who, we've, who we've accepted and gone, no. <laughs> we love you. We just adopt them. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about your health first off, man. I mean, how's yeah. it been? What do you, what do you? Well, evidently dying for a little bit moves you up the list on the transplant. So, so <laughs> they're like, what? they're like, since you coded and almost died, we'll move you up. So uh, hopefully I'll be getting a heart transplant pretty soon. Okay. And I was reading up on it when I was in the hospital and they said, when you get an organ donation, sometime you pick up like talents or characteristics from other people. And I'm like, Dude, what if I get a really talented heart? Like, what if I just wake up and I start playing the piano one day? Because like, there's stories like that. I don't know. I don't know. And then I thought, and then I thought, and then I thought, what are the chances that I'm gonna? There's a musician that's got good organs. <laughs> uh, you know, I will talk about that. I want to talk about that real quick. And I, I, I'm glad you brought it up. Is the um. You writing? How long have you been writing music for? Because I I see them all oh. the time. I love what you write, but what, how long yeah. have you been doing that for? Oh, a long time. I just kept it hid for a long time, and then I finally got old enough that I just said, <laughs> "I don't yeah. care. I'll put them yeah. out there." Yeah. Well, the uh, bad part is, like, in my mind, I have and not doing a radio show, and you probably understand this. I, I like I need an outlet. Like I have so much in my head all the time. I need some kind of creative outlet. Whether it's memes or song or like, I'm not a person that can sit and watch TV. Like I gotta do something creative, you know. I even did cowboy poetry back in the day. Oh, killer! <laughs> Dang, dude, that's that's what I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah. So, <laughs> good. You want to hear the coolest story ever, though? Yeah. So I went and got this gig to to be a to be a cowboy poet, right? And I get there and they're like, "Why aren't you dressed up?" I'm like, "What do you mean dressed up?" And I'm wearing like starch jeans and a cowboy hat. They wanted me to be like with the handkerchief and the chaps and the. Oh, like I, I'm like I'm not gonna do that. Like yeah, yeah. And so you, but they you ended just came up, off the set of like Lonesome Dove. Got yeah, fact. exactly. <laughs> but they like my poems, and they go, "We got another gig next month. We want you to come." I'm like, All right. I get there, and it was like a state FFA <laughs> convention thing. Like there's buses everywhere, and I'm like. Uh, I'm not ready for this. Like, I'm not a <laughs> professional. <laughs> and that was the first time that, that I ate calf fries. Because th these old cowboys were cooking. And he goes, you want some calf fries? I said, no, sir. I'm good. He said, you can't be a cowboy poet if you don't eat calf fries. <laughs> well, guess I'm having some calf fries then. Nailed it, man. That was when I, that's when I retired from doing cowboy poetry. <laughs> <laughs> I was once a, a cowboy poet, but the the calf the calf fries then, didn't sit well with me, so I'm not allowed to do that anymore. Yeah, I left my chaps at the cleaners. It was just a mess. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get you a lonesome dove outfit for the uh, next time I see you, and I want you to put it on. Songwriter, supporter of Texas music, cowboy poet, meme generator. Uh, you have got, I mean, honestly, I, I, I love watching your creative side, dude. How long did it take you to make a meme after you came out of the coma? Oh, it was, as soon as they gave me my phone back, they, my mom wouldn't let me have my phone because I was still under the influence of the, uh, the drugs they had me on. And she was afraid what I would, what I would make. <laughs> Probably a good idea. That's awesome. <laughs> but I, I just kept laughing and it wasn't just the fact that you make me laugh. It's the fact that you didn't waste no time. You're like, yeah, you didn't kill me. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm coming back to making memes. I, know, I, I was making some like death jokes too, and people were like, it's too soon. Like you just died. I'm like, yeah, but 
I didn't. Yeah, I'm not offended. But I don't see what the die? problem is. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with it. But did you, but did you die? die? <laughs> I told my heart doctor, I said, this is nothing compared to all the Larry Joe Taylors I've survived over the years. And he goes, Larry Joe Taylor. I said, Google it. The next day he walked in and goes, Larry Joe Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's prepared you, man, for the bigger stuff. Uh, I told him, I said, uh, you could come with me in October. It might be good to have a heart doctor there. <laughs> yeah, you're going to need you right. I'm going to buy the doc. Here's my RV. Here's my doctor's <laughs> RV. Right. <laughs> Let Larry Joe know that on Radio Row, you need a doctor next to you. It might not be bad. As many uh, musicians yeah. that have heart trouble nowadays. Well, I tell you, one thing I wanted to say to you, um, it's something that means a lot to me though is you know we help people and do what we can for new artists and stuff but you don't really realize how you affect people until something like this happens and people playing benefits and supporting me and that's when you're like god you know what i did made a difference in their life i guess you know i never realized it until all these people were doing so much for me and it was hard to be on that side of it it's harder to me to to take the help or let someone else do it, but man, Texas music is such a family. You know what I mean? I don't, yes. and I don't think people outside of it understand how that works. But it's such a tight family. It's just you can't. There's nothing else you can do and have that that feeling. Yeah, and and, and for it to be statewide like that, and even reach out yeah. even farther. And I I think the thing that I'm grateful for is that you got to know what, what you mean to everyone. Uh, because yeah. it, the thing that hurts whenever someone passes away is seeing everybody pour their heart out about that person, but that person didn't get to see all that. Right. So that hurts exactly. the most. But I'm so grateful that it, it's been, I did play your benefit, and um, and I did. I've seen the um, support that you receive all the time, and it makes my it makes me feel great. Makes my heart feel great to know that uh, you're getting to see what you mean to people because you mean a lot to a yeah. lot of people, man. Yeah, I feel like I, I got to heaven and, and God goes, no, we got to send him back down and make some memes. <laughs> He'd be like, those devil ones were great, man. <laughs> Keep that up. I'm a fan. That would be hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Oh, to God, he's just like, I'm a fan. He's, a, he's <laughs> up there going, I made that. I made that. That's a good one. <laughs> some of my best him. work right here. Check this dude out. Yeah, that's what I do with my daughter. I made her. That's how it came for me. <laughs> so my daughter is going to be going up uh, in Oklahoma. She's got a, a full scholarship to play softball. Oh, cool. At the US, USA. Uh, that's good, man. Oklahoma. Ch Chickasaw? Or... Chickasaw. Is that right? Me yeah. and you are going to play a fun game called so. Name That Oklahoma Town. That's my favorite <laughs> game. I show you the name, and then you butcher the pronunciation we've been talking with jody lee of uh steve in stephenville texas homegrown radio finding out a little bit more about him i'm sure we could talk for days and hours buddy um but uh it's been a it's been a pleasure talking with you talking about your life uh you keep making those memes you keep uh supporting the music you keep doing what you do and uh, we appreciate you big time buddy absolutely man love you james <laughs>